Hello and welcome back. Lecture 10-2, Zero Order Hold Sampling. The objectives of today's lecture are to review zero order hold sampling and to solve problems to sample and reconstruct a signal using zero order hold sampling. Theory, when a sampler provides input to an A to D converter, it may be desirable to hold the sample values for long enough to allow the A to D converter to complete its conversion. We can reconstruct the signal. It is easier to hold the value and put it through a low pass filter. We can model the sample and hold circuit with the following diagram. So we have the input X of T that is multiplied by a pulse train P of T, where P of T equals the summation from N equals negative infinity to infinity delta of T minus NTS. And then it goes through H of T and the output is the sampled signal XS of T, where H of T is defined to be a rect of T minus capital T over two divided by capital T. So H of T looks like the following. It's a shifted rect with an amplitude of one and a length of T. In the frequency domain, H of J omega would be equal to T sync of omega T over two pi. And since it's shifted, it's multiplied by an exponential, E to the negative J omega T over two. The sample signal X of T uses a sample and hold circuit as shown in the following diagram. So assume that the input is an arbitrary signal X of T with the following shape. Then the product X of T, P of T, would be the impulses that sample the signal. So if the signal looks like this, the product would be an impulse at zero, TS, 2TS, 3TS, 4TS, and 5TS. And finally, the sampled signal, XS of T, is when you hold those values. So here we would have T. And here's the original signal. And now at every value, it's held, so it's zero. It would hold here for t time. Then you would have the value at 2ts that holds here for a length t. Then you would have the value at 3ts and it holds here for length t. Here would be 4TS and 5TS and so on. So XS of T is equal to the product X of T, P of T convolved with H of T. So the Fourier transform for XS of T is XS of J omega, which is one over two pi, X of J omega convolved with P of J omega, and that result multiplied by H of J omega. So we'd have one over two pi X of J omega convolved with two pi over TS, the summation from K equals negative infinity to infinity, delta of omega minus K omega S times H of J omega. Using algebra to simplify this equation, we now have X S of J omega equals one over TS, the summation from K equals negative infinity to infinity, X of J of omega minus K omega S times H of J omega, which equals T over TS, the summation from K equals negative infinity to infinity, X of J of omega minus K omega S, sync of omega T over two pi, E to the negative J omega T over two. So the first thing I wanna show is that part of this is the same as the impulse sampler, which is this part here. But now what we see is that this term here scales the sample by a sink 
as a function of omega. This is different from what we had for the pulse sampler because for the pulse sampler, the sync varied the amplitude of the copies. For this one, the sync actually distorts the copies based upon the value of the sync at omega. When t is equal to ts, the circuit is called a zero order hold. The sampled signal x of t is shown in the following diagram. Note that you could also have a first order hold, but here would be the example of the zero order hold first. So now you would have x s of t. And here's our arbitrary signal again. And now you would have zero And it goes to TS. And then at TS, you would have the next signal, which goes to 2TS. And then it holds. And then at 3TS, you would have your next signal. And notice the difference is that they're all holding until the next sample is taken. So then you would have your next signal, 4TS. And then at 5TS, you'd have a signal like this. And then that one holds, and so on. So if it was a first order hold, you would see that the samples would have a slope in between. So like this, once again, here's our arbitrary signal. So at zero, we'd be here. And at TS, it would be there. So it would actually slope up to the next sample or slope down to the next sample. So here'd be two TS. like that, and here would be 3TS. So it's still making straight lines between the samples, but now they no longer have a slope of zero, they would have a slope of one. And so on. So when T equals TS, X S of J omega becomes the summation from K equals negative infinity to infinity, X of J of omega minus K omega S times sync of omega T S over two pi, e to the negative J omega T S over two. So the frequency response of the sample signal is given by the following figure. So assume that the input is this arbitrary waveform X of J omega that has a magnitude that looks like this. The amplitude would be A and the bandwidth would be B. So first, over here, we're going to have our sample and hold circuit. Where this envelope here represents T over TS, the magnitude of sync of omega T over two pi. So our zero crossings are at two pi over t and four pi over t. Over here, negative two pi over t and negative four pi over t. So here's where the key difference is. Unlike the pulse sampler, the samples are now actually distorted by the sink. So for example, at zero, it now actually follows along the sink as so. Or at omega s, that sample would follow along the sink and be distorted like that. Same on this side. So this would be omega s, negative omega s. And you could have a sample over here that's tracking along the sink and distort it like that. So let's say we call this two omega s and negative two omega s. So this would be your sample and hold circuit. Now what about zero order hold? So if it's zero order hold, which means that t is equal to ts, then the magnitude of x of j omega would look like the following. 
It has the same envelope here. And the equation for that envelope is now just the magnitude of the sink of omega t over 2 pi. So that means the peak here is a 1, whereas the peak on this one was t over ts. And at 0, you would have that same distorted signal again. However, because now t equals ts, my zero crossings, which are 2 pi over t and 4 pi over t, are also where my samples are located. So this would be omega s, and this would be 2 omega s. So that means now those samples are distorted by the value at the zero crossing. So they look something like this. And this one would still have the bandwidth negative B to B, just as over here. So all copies of X of J omega are distorted by the sync function. Since x s of j omega is distorted by sinc omega t over 2 pi term, so for high efficiency reconstruction or reproduction, x s of t will have to be passed through a reciprocal sinc filter having the following shape and transfer function. So the transfer function would have to have the equation h of j omega equals a over sinc of omega t over 2 pi, where omega is less than or equal to b. And the shape looks like the following. So this would be the magnitude of x of j omega. And now notice it's not flat, but it curves based upon the inverse of the sink. So it would look like the following. Example. Given the following x of j omega, sketch x s of j omega. So we see that x of j omega is a rect. So we're going to make a couple of assumptions. First, we're going to assume that we are a sampling at above the Nyquist rate so that f s is greater than 2b so that we won't get any aliasing. And we're going to compare the results for the impulse, the pulse, and the zero order hold sampler. For the impulse sampler, x s of t looks like the following. If this is x of t, which was the input, then x s of t would be the product x of t times p of t. So it's samples of that signal at zero, t s, two t s, three t s, four t s, and so on. And the equation for x s of j omega, x s of j omega is equal to 1 over t s, the summation over all k, x of j of omega minus k omega s. So the plot of the magnitude of x s of j omega would be copies of the input signal in the frequency domain scaled by 1 over ts. So I'd have a copy here with an amplitude of a over ts, negative b, 0, b. Then I would have a copy at omega s, or 2 pi over ts, same amplitude, and a copy at 2 omega s, and so on. And if you wanted to reconstruct the signal, you would use a low-pass filter 
where that low pass filter would have a gain of TS and a cutoff somewhere between B and omega S minus B. The pulse or the switch sampler. So once again, if I have an arbitrary signal and I wanna find the sample signal in the time domain, here I would have XS of T again and the pulse switch sampler would have the following samples centered at zero with a width of T and they all track along the signal. So here would be TS, 2TS, 3TS and so on and XS of J omega would be equal to the summation over all K of T over TS, sink of KT over TS, times X of J of omega minus KS, minus K omega S. So we see that the amplitude of each of the copies in the frequency domain will be scaled by sink of KT over TS. So the magnitude of XS of J omega would look like the following. First, I'm going to make the sync envelope. And this represents an envelope of AT over TS times the magnitude of sync omega T over two pi which means that my zero crossings are at two pi over T, four pi over T, zero, negative two pi over T, negative four pi over T. And my copies, I would have one at zero with an amplitude of AT over TS, and this is minus B and B. I would also have a copy at omega S and negative omega S, and this would be negative two omega S and two omega s. And the amplitudes of each of these here would be at over ts sync of two t over ts. And the amplitude of this one would be at over ts sync of T over TS. And to reconstruct the signal, you would once again use a low pass filter. And this time, your low pass filter would have an amplitude of TS over T. And the cutoff frequency, once again, would be between B and omega S minus B. So now let's take a look at our zero order hold sampler. For the zero order hold sampler, XS of T would look like the following. So if I have an arbitrary waveform here, then I would have zero order hold. I would sample at zero and hold it until T, S, sample at TS and hold it until I get to two TS and so on. So it would look like this. And XS of J omega 
would be equal to the summation over k, x of j of omega minus k omega s, and this part is similar to our switch sampler. That's going to be multiplied by sinc of omega t over 2 pi times e to the negative j omega t over 2. So the magnitude of xs of j omega will have the same envelope as the pulse switch sampler but a different amplitude. So here will be our shape. And the equation will be A, the magnitude of the sink of omega t over two pi. So the maximum here is A, here's zero, and the crossings are at two pi over t and four pi over t. Or over here, negative 2 pi over t, negative 4 pi over t. And then our sampled signals are distorted by that sink. So at zero, we would have the signal following along the sink between negative b and b. And then we would have one following along the sink at 2 pi over t, which is the same where t is equal to ts. So it would look like that. And then there would be one here where it follows along the sink. And here. And here. So for this one, in order to reconstruct the original signal, Remember, you're gonna to have to use a reciprocal sink filter. So the filter would have a cutoff between B and two pi over T, and the shape would have this reciprocal sink at the top, where that equation would be A over sink of omega T divided by two pi. And this concludes lecture 10-2 on the zero order hold sampler. And it actually concludes the last lecture of ECE 300, Continuous Time Signals and Systems. Congratulations, you made it.